Hey guys, Emily here, and welcome back to chapter four called The Keeper of the Keys. This chapter is found within Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, written by J.K. Rowling. This book was found on the Amazon Kindle store. Let's get reading to find out what happens next. Boom! They knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon? he said stupidly. There was a crash behind them and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Who's there? he shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause and then smash. The door was hit with such a force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard. But you could make out his eyes, glinting like black beetles under all that hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat frozen with fear. Budge up, yea, great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching terrified behind Uncle Vernon. And here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up to the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you... You was only a baby, said the giant. You look a lot like your dad, but you've got your mom's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny rasping noise. I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, shut up, Dursley. You get great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot as easily if it had been made of rubber and threw it into a corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back to the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to you. Got some it for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it'll taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake with Happy Birthday Harry written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on the way to his mouth. And what he said was, Who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rubius Hagrid, Keeper of Keys and Grounds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say no to her summon strong if you've got it in mind. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in it, and he snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light, and Harry felt the warmth wash over him, and as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began taking all sorts of things out of the pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of, package of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great puddin' of a son don't need fattening any more, Dursley, don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed about to explain anything, he said, 
I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid, he said. Everyone does. And like I told you, I'm keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them as should be sorry. I knew ye weren't getting your letters, but I never thought ye would even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did ye never wonder where ye parents learned it all? All what? asked Harry. All what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one second. He had leapt to his feet. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about, about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school, after all, and his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can, you know, do math and stuff. But Hagrid, Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, About our world, I mean. Your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley! He boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like Mimble Wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But ye must know about your mom and dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mom and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know, you don't know, Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what ye are, he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have qualified under the furious look with Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his very syllable trembled with rage. You never told him? Never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him? I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley, and you've kept it from him all these years. Kept what from me? said Harry eagerly. Stop! I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, go boil your heads, both of ye said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was silence in the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Henry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumpin' goodin', I'd say. Once you've been trained up a bit with a mum and a dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter, which read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Source, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederates of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide what to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, what does it mean they await my owl? Gallopin' Gorgons, that reminds me, said Hagrid, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And from yet another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl. A real, live, rather ruffled-looking owl. A long quill and a roll of parchment paper. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note that Harry could read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, given Harry his letter, taking him to buy things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well, Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped in its beak, went to the door, and threw the owl into the storm. Then he came back and sat down, as though this was normal, was talking on the telephone. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. 
Where was I? said Hagrid, but at the moment Uncle Vernon, still ashen faced, looked very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, he said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you stop him, he said. A what? said Harry, interested. A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what we call non magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. Swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, Harry said. You knew I'm a, a wizard? Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew? Of course we knew. How could you not be, my dratted sister being what she was? Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that, that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that. They were proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed she had been wanting to say all of this for years. Then she met that potter at school, and they left and got married and had you, and of course I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal as them. If you please, she went and got herself blown up, and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash! roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back to their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in the world knows his name. But why? What, what happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I've never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea. When Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you, how much you didn't know. Ah, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but something's gotta. You can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you, well, it's best you as much as I can tell you mind. I can tell you everything. It's a great mystery parts of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for five seconds, and then said, it begins, I suppose, with a person called, but it's incredible you don't know his name. Everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Gulp and gargoyles, Harry. People are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went bad. As bad as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was Hagrid gulped, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, I can't spell it. All right. Volda. Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyways, this this wizard about twenty years ago now started looking for followers. Got him too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power, cause he was getting himself power. All right. Dark days. Harry didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him, and he killed him horribly. One of the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore is the only one. You know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try to take in the school, not just then, anyways. Now your mum and dad were as good as a witch and a wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Suppose the mystery is why you never know who tried to get him on his side before probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade them. Maybe he just wanted them out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up in the village where you was all living on Halloween ten years ago. You was just one year old. He came to your house and... and... Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with the sound of a foghorn. Sorry, he said, but it's that sad. Knew your mom and dad and nicer people you couldn't find. Anyway, you know who killed him. And then, and this is the real mystery for the thing, he tried to kill you too. Want or make a clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead. That was no ordinary cut. That's what ye get when a powerful evil curse touches ye. 
take care of your mom and dad and your house, even. But it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to kill him. No one except you. And he'd killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Pruitts. And you was only a baby and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Hagrid's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of green light, more clearly than he had ever remembered it before, and he remembered something else. For the first time in his life, a high, cold, cruel laugh. Hagrid was watching him sadly. Took you from the ruined house myself on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you here to this lot. Load of old tosh, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He had almost forgotten that the Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have got his back his courage. He was glaring at Hagrid and his fists were clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept there's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good good beating wouldn't have cured. And as for all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos, no denying it. And the world's better off without them, in my opinion. As for all they got, got getting mixed up with these wizarding types, just what I expected. Always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at that moment, Hagrid leapt up from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat, pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword. He said, I'm warning you, Dursley, I'm warning you. One more word. In danger of being speared on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa this time sagged right down into the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask, hundreds of them. But what happened to Vol- uh, sorry, I mean, uh, you know who? Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Same night he tried to kill you. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. Codswallop, in my opinion, to know if he had enough human left in him to die. Some say he's still out there, biding his time. Like, but I don't believe it. People who was on his side came back to ours. Some of them came back out of kind of trances. Don't reckon they couldn't have done it if he was coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Because something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night that hadn't he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was. No one does. But something about you stumped him, all right. Hagrid looked at Harry with warmth and respect, blazing in his eyes. But Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he really was a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toads every time they tried to lock him up in the cupboard? If once he'd defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Hagrid, he said quietly, I think you must have made a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To his surprise, Hagrid chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you was scared or angry? Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he... Harry had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach, dreading going back to with the ridiculous haircut. He managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, hadn't he got his revenge without even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? Harry looked back at Hagrid smiling and saw that Hagrid was positively beaming at him. See, said Hagrid, Harry Potter, not a wizard, you wait, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vernon wasn't going to live without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going, he hissed. He's going to Stonewall High and he'll be grateful for it. I've read those letters and he needs all sorts of rubbish, spell books and wands. And if he wants to go, a great muggle like you won't stop him, growled Hagrid. Stop Lily and James Potter's son going to Hogwarts. You're mad. His name's been down ever since he was born. He's off to the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the world. Seven years there and he won't know himself. 
He'll be with youngsters of his own sort for a change, and he'll be under the great headmaster Hogwarts ever had. Albus Dumbledore, I'm not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks, yelled Uncle Vernon. But he had finally gone too far. Hagrid seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered, insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me. He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light, a sound like a firecracker, and a sharp squeal. And the next second, Dudley was dancing on the spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on them, Harry saw a curly pig's tail poking through a hole in his trousers. Uncle Vernon roared, pulling Aunt Petunia and Dudley into the other room. He cast one last terrified look at Hagrid and slammed the door behind them. Hagrid looked down at his umbrella and stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost me temper, he said ruefully, but it didn't work anyway. Meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway there wasn't much left to do. He cast a sideways look at Harry under his bushy eyebrows. Be grateful if you didn't mention to anyone at Hogwarts, he said. I'm er, not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do her for a bit, and you got letters and stuff, and know the reasons I was so keen to take the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts myself, but I er, uh, got expelled, to tell you the truth. In my third year, they snapped me one in half and everything, but Dumbledore let me stay on as a gameskeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? It's getting late. And we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Hagrid loudly. Get her up to town. Get all your books and that. He took off his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can kip that, he said. Don't mind if it wiggles a bit. I think I still got a couple of door mice in one of the pockets. All right, guys, that does it for chapter four. Stay tuned next time when we dig into chapter five called Diagon Alley.